Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live. I'm Saquon. Um, I was outside in the humidity, so I think that's why my hair is looking like that. Okay, um, don't forget, before we get started, you can always watch and listen to this live stream. Um, always, you know, later on our Inform YouTube channel. If you didn't know about it, we do have a YouTube channel now um, or on your favorite podcast platform. Um, you can also find that just by visiting inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute as well. All right, let's get uh, really quick before we get onto this breaking news here. Um, Want to point ahead to mosquito spraying in Dilworth happening today. Um, that's going to be a localized spraying, uh, and that's going to be on First Avenue Northwest between 5th Street Northwest to County Road 9 in Dilworth. Um, it could also happen tomorrow, depending on the weather. Uh, when our storm tracker meteorologist, Lydia Bloom, was talking to us, she said things should be okay for crews in Dilworth, um, but that will kind of keep track of and let you know. Um, so yeah, if you live in Dilworth, uh, mosquito spraying will be happening either tonight or tomorrow, no earlier um, than 8 p.m. All right, um, also let's talk about this breaking news. Um, I was there this morning, I kind of left right in the middle of our show here just to check it out. And uh, we do know um, that there were police and SWAT teams surrounding this house um, in right just near like 10th Avenue South, right between 5th and 6th Street South. Um, and when I was there, I saw, you know, lots of squad cars actually. You just couldn't really tell by like one picture. And I actually do have that picture pulled up here so I can just show you guys if you're not familiar with it yet. Uh, but um, yeah, lots of squad cars there, even though I could only really capture one, um, only because obviously a lot of these roads are blocked off. That would be 5th and 6th Street. And um, it was harder for us to kind of get a you know, a picture of all of the squad cars. So let me just show you the picture that I took this morning. So this is what it looked like um, when I got there on one side. Um, but then I went around to the other side and that's where I did a little Facebook Live on this Facebook page, WDAY. So if you want to check that out, you can always do that as well and just kind of click back at it. Um, but if you're not familiar with what's happening, um, we do know that there is a high risk knock and announce search warrant. And um, you are asked to avoid this area at all. Like right now, um, I'm not quite sure. We do have a reporter out there live right now. I believe she just got some information um, from Fargo police. So we'll definitely bring that update online, inform.com in our evening newscasts as well. Um, but avoid that area. It's kind of near Island Park, near Hawthorne Elementary. So. Uh, avoid that area you're not going to be able to get through uh, and we'll let you know if that gets opened back up um, okay also moving on to 32nd avenue project um, we told you uh, sometime earlier this month that the city of fargo was going to move ahead with a uh, reconstruction project on 32nd avenue and uh, there was a lot of debate uh, within these commissioners and they were talking about adding this right turn lane along 32nd um, onto 25th because that would help with traffic flow. Um, a lot of people though who opposed that idea uh, were saying, you know, that's gonna make it more pedestrian friendly if it doesn't get added. So um, that might still be in talks. Uh, that could still be included in that reconstruction project. Um, so basically they struck down that vote um, to add that right turn lane earlier this month. And now they're just hoping for more information on it you know how much would it cost to get that project added back in um you know what is the significance of this is it really going to make that big of a big of a difference you know so that's kind of the information that they're waiting on we do know that the um final contract is expected to be ready by august 8th which is the next city commission meeting for fargo so um we'll definitely let you know what comes out of that um and you can stick with us uh, we also had a big update um, on that Rolla fire at the American Legion. We did bring that story to you yesterday on First News. Um, Rolla's fire chief tells us the two firefighters did get hurt um, while trying to put out that fire. Both of them are expected to be okay, so that's really good news there. Uh, at one point, we also learned 50 firefighters were on scene battling this huge fire. I mean, we got to see video of it yesterday, you guys, and you could just see all of these flames just shooting out of the roof. Um, but... 
even with those 50 firefighters, the fire chief says that it's probably a total loss um, and he's estimating the damage to be at least $200,000. Uh, so wanted to let you know about that update as promised. And then in Grand Forks this morning, we know that a Fort Taunton woman is in jail there um, because police say that she stabbed a man in an alley behind a bar over the weekend. Uh, so that happened at around 1.15 on Sunday morning, right behind Sledster's off of South 4th Street. Um, so... According to police, this woman asked a man for a cigarette and he said that he didn't have a cigarette and that's when she stabbed him with an unknown weapon and then took off running. Well, when she was found by officers, she was uncooperative um, and she told them that she was actually not there. She was at the nearby Northland Rescue Mission at the time of the stabbing. Well, 34-year-old Michelle Amesbach is now charged with aggravated assault. She does face up to five years in prison if convicted, uh, and then a $10,000 fine on top of that. So um, she's going to be back in court next month. <laughs> Sorry update, about that. Oh. that. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Lisa. Um, okay, so we do have an update for you on that breaking news. I'm just going to read it out loud here. Red River Valley SWAT conducted a successful entry and detention of multiple people associated with this morning's operation. Okay, so it seems like people were taken away from that scene. Um, we do know that there were more, multiple people inside that house where they were kind of surrounding there. Um, so the scene is now secure. SWAT is clear. Uh, Cass County Drug Task Force is executing its search process of the property via warrant. So they got that warrant. They're going to go through that area and uh, try to find something here. Two people are under arrest for outstanding warrants at this time. Um, and it's an active investigation. No further information available at this moment, you guys. A uh, really big update, though. So, um, yeah, that was just as of a few minutes ago. Um, so more updates to come. Obviously, right now with an active investigation, we're not going to be able to figure out all the answers that you're wondering or I'm wondering. But um, uh, we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Okay, um, going back to it, let's talk about that Fufun corn milling plant in Grand Forks. Um, this is something that we've been talking about for so long, uh, but that proposed federal review of Fufung, uh, we, knew, we know now that uh, Governor Doug Burgum is joining the effort. So he sent a letter to the U.S. Committee on Foreign Investment, and uh, he said that he wants that review to be done as quickly as possible. Uh, we know, you know, um, both senators from North Dakota, Kevin Kramer, John Hoven, they requested that federal committee to review that plant um, a couple weeks ago, and they were pointing to the fact that a review could clear up some of these national security concerns that people have been talking about because it's going to be built right near the Air Force Base there. Um, City Council is set to have a, an approval vote on the development agreement sometime next week. We'll get that update for you as soon as we can because I know this is important for those of you living in Grand Forks. Um, also, there might be a lot of Cass County Sheriff's vehicles with their lights on in Tower City. If you happen to pass by that, don't freak out. It's okay. Um, they're just going to be doing another round of that planned active shooter training. Um, so that's going to be taking place just outside of Maple Valley School. That's going to start at 6 tonight, go until 9. Uh, you can see... You know, people like Cass County deputies, you got firefighters, emergency responders all around that school. You're asked to avoid that area until that training is over. But again, just a planned active shooter training, uh, very similar to what's kind of been happening or what they've kind of been doing over the past several weeks here. So uh, nothing to freak out over. It's OK. Um, and yeah. OK, going back to Grand Forks. Sorry, I should have ordered this a little bit better. But um, if you have any damaged trees in your yard and you're trying to get rid of it, but you don't know what to do with it. Good news, because crews can pick that up for you for free. Um, a lot of these damaged trees are probably coming from last weekend's storm. And uh, we also know that those that storm system also damaged trees and buildings west of Grand Forks and then moved across the city. So if you're hoping to get rid of that debris, all you have to do is just put that debris on the boulevard. It's going to take about a week or two to collect everyone's debris, of course. They're going to just make a one pass through the city. Um, you can also drop it off at the landfill, though, don't forget. And that can be for free until August 6th. All right, sticking in Grand Forks, um, more construction to talk about today. Um, there's going to be a lane that's going to be closed uh, for northbound traffic on South Washington Street at the intersection of 7th Avenue South. So that, of course, will be down to just one lane. Think right by the KFC in Grand Forks. Um, so crews are going to be doing some utility work and they need to access a manhole in that road. Um, and this lane closure, though, is kind of unique. Um, it's not going to be in place for the entire time it's only going to be in place when crews are working so 
um, when they're done at the end of the day, that lane should be back open. This is a two day project. Um, so just wanted to let you know about that. Okay. Um, in Detroit Lakes, we know five people there are hurt after two cars crashed on the county highway. Uh, that happened at the intersection of Highway 59 and County Road 6. So think just a little bit south of Detroit Lakes um, at around 8 yesterday morning. Uh, we know that one car with four people in it tried to turn onto the county road uh, and then they hit someone going the other way on the highway. Two out of the five people did have to go to Essentia in Detroit Lakes. Everyone involved, though, is expected to be okay. All right, let's talk more on a national level of things. Um, right now, as you're scrolling through your social media pages, you're probably seeing a lot on the St. Louis, Missouri flooding. Um, heavy rain that's leading to life-threatening flooding right now. Uh, so the National Weather Service there is saying 12 inches of rain uh, has, has fallen there in that area since midnight. Um, and you know that there are reports of several cars getting stuck near that downtown area. Parts of the city have even been evacuated. Um, and we heard even reporters were getting stranded there too. So um, lots going on there. Praying for everyone in St. Louis. Hope everything's okay. But of course, we'll follow up on that throughout the day for you. Okay, um, let's talk about some better news, right? Um, tonight, the third largest ever jackpot for a lottery game is going to be drawn. So tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is estimated at $810 million. It was so funny because at the beginning of the show, we were talking about... Um, what we would even do with that money. How many houses can you buy with that kind of money, right? Like, how would you even act if you had all that money in your hands? Um, but, okay, so the largest jackpot ever was the Powerball, which happened back in January of 2016. That one reached $1.5 billion. So crazy. Um, and then we also just kind of wanted to see where that stood in our home states, right? Um, so North Dakota's largest jackpot given belongs to George Nelson of Grafton. Back in 2009, he won a Powerball jackpot that was worth $1.6 million. And then in Minnesota, that big jackpot went to a couple in Burnsville, um, which was worth nearly $230 million. I'm freaking out. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fun maybe maybe you'll score that jackpot who knows i just saw on twitter that um the founder of raising canes the the uh, restaurant chain uh bought a ticket for everybody and i think it's kind of cool so i don't know all right nfl plus um they the national football league is joining the streaming world and that's what they're going to be releasing it's nfl nfl plus uh so for about five dollars a month or about forty dollars a year uh you can su subscribe and you can access live local primetime games it's the same type of content that it's been offering for free on the app for the past several years but the streaming service is exclusively available on iPhones and tablets, which I know what you're thinking. Uh, you cannot stream games to your TVs, but uh, viewers who want the full game replays, you can sign up for the premium version, which will cost you about $10 a month. Okay, um, Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. Today, it's being hosted by Logan Campbell again. So um, make sure you go join her on Hot Mike. It should be a really fun time. Um, and that's on from 9 to 11, Extra inform.com. All right, also on inform.com, speaking of, uh, we had this story um, yesterday and today, but today we had an update on this. Uh, here's the headline. It's Fargo commissioners reject public vote to add two more members by Barry Robinson. So we told you yesterday that um, Commissioner John Strand was proposing this idea and he wanted, you know, to grow the Fargo City Commission from five seats to seven, um, but it got struck down. So if you'd like to read up a little bit more in depth about that, you can certainly do that just by visiting our website, inform.com. Okay. And speaking of, right now you can get uh, six months of unlimited, unlimited local news for just $2. Today is the last day that you can get this deal. And then tomorrow we're going to go back to that deal uh, where you uh, pay 99 cents a month for your first three months. So um, go take advantage of that deal while you can. Again, today is the last day you can take advantage of it. So I uh, wanted to let you know about that. But of course, uh, you can always Stay tuned to WDAY at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. I'm sure we'll have updates um, on that breaking story that we had out of Fargo. Lots to come out of the St. Louis flooding going on there as well. So make sure you come join us in our evening newscast. And then we'll be back here tomorrow morning, 5 to 7. All right, everybody, have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.